historic step here in New York City in support of the Muslim community. Mayor Adams announced new guidelines clearing the way for the Muslim call to prayer to bring out freely. For too long there has been confusion about which communities are allowed to amplify their calls to prayer. Today we are uh, cutting red tape and saying clearly, if you are a mosque or a house of worship of any kind, you do not have to apply for a permit to amplify your call to Friday prayer. Under the new initiative, the call to prayer can be broadcast every Friday between 12.30 and 1.30 p.m. during the sunset prayers every evening during Ramadan. <laughs> We are uh, cutting red tape and saying clearly, if you are Mars or a house of worship of any kind, you do not have to apply for a permit to amplify your call to Friday prayer. We are committed to giving you the recognition you deserve. That's why again and again you are hearing about the first. Over and over again you are hearing the words, this is the first time, this is the first time, this is the first time. Add this on to this is the first time. And you're going to hear more first time. And so we're going to show the world how we come together with all of our faith leaders and under the law, we are all treated equal. That's why I want to be very clear. We are not changing the rules to benefit anyone or anyone who. <laughs> Hi everyone. Good news for Muslims in New York City, United States. New York Mayor Eric Adams issued a new regulation in which he allows Muslims to call to prayer. The move means that New York City has joined other cities in the U.S., including Minneapolis, that have implemented similar measures earlier. However, the call to prayer can only be heard at certain times. Under the new rules signed by Adams, the call to prayer can only be heard on Fridays and at Maghrib time. Mosques also do not need special permission to call to prayer on the designated days. The announcement was made to create a more inclusive New York City. with mosques in New York City allowed to call to prayer between 12.30 p.m. and 1.30 p.m. local time, specifically on Fridays. This news quickly drew rave reviews from the local Muslim community. Muslims there called it one of the biggest blessings they have ever received as Muslims in New York City. Being able to hear the Adhan every Friday as we walk to the mosque on one of the holiest days for us means a lot to our children. Most of us parents grew up listening to the call to prayer at home. We miss the call to prayer so much that we can now hear it from the mosques. Alhamdulillah, said the Muslims there. So now, thanks to the mayor's office and the mayor himself, our young generation, our future generation, can have the same experience that we had growing up in Muslim countries. However, the police will continue to monitor the call to prayer so that the volume of the call to prayer is in accordance with the rules, which does not exceed 10 decibels. In addition to New York, Minneapolis also applies the same rule. There is a concession to calling to prayer with loudspeakers. This initiative, which allows the call to prayer on Friday and the Maghrib call to prayer during Ramadan, was led by the New York City Police Department. 
The New York City Police Department's new legal guidelines clarify that the add-in is permitted in New York City despite sound-related restrictions in city neighborhoods, said a press release from the mayor's office. New York City's police commissioner said he was proud of the idea's strong community outreach, crime-fighting efforts, and ongoing public safety mission. Previously, under the leadership of former Mayor Mike Blumber, the NYPD launched a program that secretly stated they were watching the Muslim community and sending informants to mosques to listen to sermons. An internal audit later revealed that the spying program failed to yield a single criminal lead. The surveillance program, targeting the city's Muslim community, has now been abandoned. The mayor's announcement of the call to prayer initiative, however, did not escape the spotlight following Mayor Adams' visit to Israel. During his visit, he reportedly met with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The visit sparked a flood of criticism, including from Jewish Americans and Palestinian Americans. Some argued that the timing of the announcement, which came a week after Idem's visit to Israel, was not a coincidence, but an attempt to distract Muslims in the midst of increasing violence against Palestinians. Activist Nerdine Kizwani emphasized that allowing mosques to call to prayer was an important step in New York City's embrace of the Muslim community. But this is tainted by the fact that his move comes soon after Mayor Adams' shameful trip to meet with Israeli leaders, who trample on the freedom, rights, and dignity of both Muslims and Christians in Palestine. This is a gift from God Almighty. We can now worship comfortably in mosques, and we can already hear the call to prayer. For us, it is enough so that the younger generation can know that the call to prayer will apply before praying," said a Muslim in New York City. The head of the Ideal Islamic School in Queens said that this new rule in New York City sends a positive message to the students at his school. Our children will be reminded of who they are when they hear the call to prayer," he said at the Adams press conference. Hearing the call to prayer in New York City neighborhoods will also make them feel like part of a recognized community. As someone who grew up in Egypt and has heard the call to prayer all my life, I really miss this beautiful and reassuring reminder to pause and be grateful for what we have received from our Lord," said Imam Abdullah Salam from the Muslim Community Center in Brooklyn. I am so grateful to be able to hear the call to prayer again in this safe city. Well, Islamic Circles viewers, until our meeting this time, I hope you all inspire. See you in the next video.